best mod I own. Busy doing nothing, which ain't true, I have a job. <laughs> Hey what's up you guys, welcome back to my channel, I'm Shin you here, hi hello I'm Lydia and today I'm talking about the time I got arrested and I did make a video on this about a year ago but I took it down. This video is not going to be what you think it is. When I got arrested I actually was proved to have not done anything wrong and in court all charges against me were dismissed. That being said, this is a really hard video to me. I don't talk about this, I have a lot of flashbacks from this and the whole thing has been traumatising. This was two years ago and here I am now still struggling with it at night when I dream. I have nightmares about this. This is me sharing one of the biggest traumatic events in my life. This is a story about something that is incredibly traumatic and for my own safety and protection all comments are going to approval only. Every comment on this one needs to be approved by me or a moderator of this channel and that's very simply because last time I posted about this it nearly cost me my own life. The last time I told the story I took an overdose that night and that was because of certain hate pages. That's not happening a second time around. I want to share this because it happened and people to know they're not alone and I honestly I'm making this video because nobody should have to go through this. In this video I'm going to be sharing various documents including my own custody record, court documents and arrest record. The only thing I will say is obviously I'm going to be blacking out my mobile number, my old address, any other names apart from my own will be removed or changed. Legally I have every right to make this video. I have every right to share my experience. Since this whole thing happened, a trial did take place in which those involved in this were uh, sentenced. I do not want to share with you the sentences that were passed down or anything beyond what I shared in this video. Making this video is not me looking for attention. In fact, I don't particularly want to make this video. I'm making it so the hate dies down, the rumours die down, and so people know what actually happened. There is a reason I get paperwork for everything that goes on in my life. I don't feel like I have to prove myself, but I also want I also want to prove myself. Let me just be very blunt in the beginning. This video is very emotional for me. So please, please think about things before you comment them, because it does have an effect. What actually happened that day? So it was the 16th of June 2008. I was in my flat at the time and I was feeling suicidal. I contacted an HS one They sent the police. The police then arrested me and this was proven in court to be a set-off. But I was arrested under Section 5 Part 2 of the Criminal Law Act. And I'm going to read to you the charge they tried to file on me. On the 16th of the 6th at Preston in the county of Lancashire, Cause wasteful employment of the police by knowingly making PC false report to give rise to apprehension for safety of persons or property. Entry to section 5 part 2 of the Criminal Law Act 1967. Basically the accusation was that I wasn't the struggling mental health. I was making it up for attention which sort of points out I didn't even call the police. I literally called NHS more than one because I didn't know what to do. You know, that was a time in my life where I felt so, so shit. Like, I was trying, I was making an attempt on my life pretty much every week. Even in custody, I self-harmed and made an attempt on my life. So this is my custody. So, reason arrest necessary. Prompt and effective investigation of the offence or conduct of the persons in question. I should also point out that the charge I was placed, the Criminal Law Act part of this, they could have just given me a fixed penalty notice. Like I said, this was all proved to be a set-up, but we're going to get to that when it comes to that. So I was arrested at 11 minutes past 9 in the morning, according to my record. I was cooperative, I didn't... They just came in and said, Lydia, you're under arrest, and I just went with them. They don't, they don't handcuff you, like, they only handcuff people when there's ending it to. I'm not, an, I'm not a combative person, I'm not an aggressive person. The, the first input on this is... Just after nine, so I did request a solicitor. I know my rights and I know the law. I had a solicitor. My solicitor in custody was shit, but hey, I did switch solicitor. 
so that's fine. In 20 minutes past 9. A strip search was authorised by Sergeant for the reason to remove articles in which the detainee is not allowed to keep on the ground. The detained person has mental health issues and regularly self-harm. The next import is 10.42. What happened in the hour that's missing? What the custody record doesn't show. When that strip search was authorised, I cried. I literally cried and I don't cry much but I went with them into the cell and then multiple officers piled in and I was pinned up into the wall with a stupid fucking band that I was handcuffed. <laughs> and I was assaulted several times. I never felt so with this before then I didn't I don't know why I did do you deserve that I find it so hard now to go out and trust people I, I really can't and this is why I don't talk about this because I was fucking crying officers piled in that spell there was seven of them, I think, and I just used like a fucking rag doll. Like, it <laughs> there was nothing I could do, I didn't bother with anything. <laughs> I just let it happen. <laughs> That's why I moved away. And the best thing is, the only reason this even happened was because of one person in Lancashire who made a report to the police that I was lying about my mental health, which I never have ever. I've never lied about my mental health. The fact that <laughs> They took her word and used that to do this. And it's obvious it was a cell. Even my solicitor agreed and we was able to prove that in court. There should not have been that many officers in that custody suite. There shouldn't have been. And there was. Right, the 1042. A strip search was carried out in cell 16. The search was conducted by. The result of the search was negative hour of my life and it has ruined everything. All I did was try and help myself with my mental health and when people say oh, that I'm afraid to you know, be outside because of police this is why I am absolutely terrified. You can't even ask back at this. I, I, I know it's police a mile away. And because of how paranoid this made me. This is the reason my paranoia is so bad. This is why I struggle. This is where most of the flashbacks come from. And even making this, I feel, I feel disgusting. I feel horrible. I, I feel like it was my fault and it wasn't. And that fence is, is, is a BNC, if, uh, an FPC. It's a fixed penalty notice. It's not. It's not even an arrestable event. I was kept in custody for 48 hours. I was refused bail because of risk to sell. I self-harmed to a point where they had to call emergency medics because I dug my nails in my arm and it was bleeding. And then the next day I had a mental health fact assessment where I said that I was gonna go and kill myself. I don't care what the outcome is. I'll just kill myself. <laughs> And I said to them very specifically what I was going to do. I'm not going to read that out in this because... But I was then placed on a section two. I was taken to hospital with... I don't even know how many police officers. I think there must have been three. Three police officers. And the entire time, I just sat in a chair looking at a fucking wall. I couldn't even talk. I couldn't think about anything that had happened. I can process it. I still can't fucking process it. So this actually went to trial. I took this to trial because I went not guilty in court and I have no regrets with the trial. My solicitor uh, presented evidence against the police force. We had the CCTV tape, we had evidence, we proved my sight beyond any reasonable doubt. The letter actually read, the Lydia R.A. pressed the magistrate's court 25th September 2018. I write to confirm that you are here before a court the above days to face trial in respect to the allegation you have wasted police time. Having heard all the evidence from the prosecution, I made a submission to the court that there was no case for you to answer. Happily, the court agreed and the case against you was dismissed. You can now treat this matter as closed. So that's the thing. 
can I treat it as flowers? No, because after this, I spent a year going backwards and forwards with the prosecution team, pressing charges against those who attacked me. The only reason is not actually that long ago that there was officers involved. Face trial. Was that justice? Not in my opinion. I am not a criminal. I am not that person that people like to pay me to be. People like to say that I am attention seeking, I'm lying about things, that I make these things up. I don't have the capacity to come up with stuff like that. And I certainly don't have the time to do this. And sharing my story is something I do because I know there are other people who go through this. I cannot see, I don't think every police officer is corrupt because I have met some amazing police officers who are incredible at their job. In Lancashire too, that one incident has thrown my trust so far that I will probably never trust people the same again. And this is to the two people who said I was lying about the arrest and I'm lying about it getting dismissed. I, at this current moment, have got a full DBS check that I passed. I have no criminal conviction. I've never been arrested for any actual offence. The arrest that was made against me was proven to be malicious. I have seen the footage of me being assaulted. We have that CCTV evidence and we pressed it in court and justice was given also to speak. Think before you say something to someone. It is never okay to invalidate anyone's trauma and if you've ever been assaulted or sexually assaulted or attacked by anyone I am so sorry you had to go through that and I want you to know that you are worthy and of life you, you are cared about people who care about you and don't let the abusers win. Don't be afraid to take charge and press charges. Don't be afraid to fight them. This was one of them things that I was thinking I am never going to be there going to get away with it and nothing will ever come of it and I was wrong. Something did come of it. There was originally an order put in place by myself that protected me from having news outlets report on this situation. Since it concluded, I have spoken about this with my solicitor who is absolutely incredible. The whole court experience was so overwhelming. I cried both times and yeah. I was a mess. I even got my. At the time of that trial, my GP prescribed me with 10 milligram diazepam. I had to use it. I, I, I couldn't function. And then the next weekend, I ended up getting sectioned. After that, it was too intense. The trial really fucked with me. This is a side of my life. No, I don't talk about. This is the reason I moved away from Lancashire. I mean, I used to use cocaine. I used to drink. There were so many things I could have been arrested for. I could have been arrested for cocaine possession. But no. The one time she phones for help. This is why I struggle with getting support. This is why things reach crisis in my life before I can deal with it. So to anyone struggling, I want you to know you are not alone. And... The thing I have decided to do to try and help others is I have started a monthly mental health subscription box. It is full of free self-care things, it's full of so many full-sized items and different distractions. It's fully customizable. It's non-gender exclusive so you can ask for whatever colour you want. And it's £15.50p. Half the money made on anything from my Etsy store is donated to Mind, the mental health charity here in the UK. Any and all support is appreciated, even if it's just a comment or a subscribe or a like or a share. Sharing the video, sharing the hard moments of this. The reason I'm making this video is so you don't feel alone. And I know I haven't talked about everything too much. But that's what happened when I got arrested. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys tomorrow with a new video. Peace.